more minutes, okay? We're going to sing and then we'll dismiss y'all to take off in a few minutes, all right? So, all right. All right, brother. Thank you, brother. Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Well, about 30 of you. I don't know where the rest of y'all are at. Boy, we sure are glad to be here. It's so exciting for us to get to be here. And uh, you can over the years that we've been coming here, you know, I had all three of the girls that were traveling with us all the time. And uh, two of them have gotten married off. And uh, our daughter, Sarah, now she lives in Aiken, South Carolina, and Sarah uh, normally still travels with us uh, probably a couple of weeks out of the month, uh, but she could not make it up here today, unfortunately, but I'm thankful that Ashley's still here, amen, and uh, so thankful that she's still here, amen, amen. And she's going to give her testimony here in a moment, and uh, then of course my wife, Jane, she's here, Jane and I celebrated 37 years of marriage in October, and we're just thankful to be here, amen. But one of the things I've learned over the years is when the girls can't travel with us all the time, I've learned to put their voices on the on, yeah. the, on these soundtracks. Amen. And so it's so, Brother Adam, it's so much cheaper. I've right? learned doing that, uh, just doing that. So we put Sarah's voice on the track, so you'll kind of hear her coming through here singing with us. But, uh, but we're thankful and grateful to be here this morning. Amen. Let us sing a few songs for you. Here's an old song we love to do called Have You Ever Seen a Miracle? Amen. Listen to the song. That'll be a blessing to you. Yeah. 
may have turned the Milky Way through a telescopic lens. You may have seen wonders or from the Lou to the Taj Mahal. If you weren't in the pew, then not when I break through, Lord, you haven't seen the thing at all. Have you ever Miracles come true as I became a walking, talking miracle. When by grace my broken heart's life was instantly made new. If you want to see a miracle, all you have to do is ask Him. And Jesus in His mercy. Show you on a close hill, make any miracle with you. How many believe that? Amen. How many remember the life that Jesus made a miracle out of your life? Amen. What a blessing that was. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot was in shambles, a place where Satan dumped his trash. On a scale of ten, so full of sin I was, minus fifteen crash. A miracle still happened, so the preacher said one night. I prayed a desperate prayer, and right then and there, God proved the preacher right. Have you ever seen a Miracles come true as I became a walking, talking miracle. When by grace my broken heart's life was instantly made new. If you want to see a miracle, all you have to do is ask Him. Jesus in His mercy.
created in Christ Jesus unto good works that he yeah, hath before right. ordained that we walk in them. Amen. Yeah. It's always been God's plan after we got saved by the grace of God to start living for him yeah. and doing the things that God wants us to do, including supporting missions. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And so what a blessing it is to be able to be in the house of the Lord to proclaim his message one more time. That Jesus saves, Jesus amen. saves. Thank God Jesus amen. still amen. saves. Amen. Yeah. amen. And you all pray for me this morning. I was in Chattanooga for the last couple of weeks. And uh, man, the pollen started coming around there. Jeff even told me this morning, the very first thing Jeff said, he said, you sound terrible this morning. He said, and uh, what an encourager, amen. But, uh, but, uh, but anyhow, but, uh, and I had, I just got a uh, sinus infection or something going on, but uh, feeling okay, amen. I mean, I'll make it, hallelujah. But uh, that's why I'm gonna let you sing so I can clear my voice, amen. But come up here and tell them what the Lord's been doing for you. Great. And um, so many people ask about Ashley all the time and uh, some of the things that she's dealt with. And uh, and I want you to just take a couple of minutes and tell the story and, um, and just tell what God's been doing and sing this song for us this morning. Um, I see a lot of new faces this morning, so I'll probably start from the beginning. Um, when I was four years old, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And um, they told my parents after my surgery, they said there's a possibility that she can start having seizures now or as she becomes an adult, she can have seizures. And um, I went until I was 26 years old without having any. And um, we were getting ready to go to the studio and woke up <coughs> like at, at any normal morning and I was getting ready and I was talking to my sister and all of a sudden I said, I feel really funny. And um, the next thing I know I was, having a seizure and didn't know what was going on. And uh, little did I know that, that was going to start a very long road for me, um, trying to figure out what kind of medicine I need to be on, adjusting medication. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so they put me on a medication that they thought this should help you tremendously. And little did I know that it was going to cause a whole other situation that we didn't know about. And um, in 2020, um, I developed blood clots and we found out that I had factor five and that started a whole nother road and um, I've dealt with those for the last three or four years and um, in and out of the hospital all the time for a little bit I'll be doing okay and then it flares back up again and um, in the fall of 2022 was probably the roughest for me um, we were on the road for only a few weeks and um, I had just um, did my cousin's wedding and we got to Pennsylvania and we set up like any other weekend and we got ready. And, um, I went to bed that Saturday night not feeling too well and um, I didn't sleep great. And at about five o'clock in the morning, I was in excruciating pain. And um, my sister Sarah went got my parents and explained to them what was going on and they had to rush me to the hospital. And um, 
I knew that it was probably blood clots, but I didn't want to admit that it was. I was hoping that it was something completely different. And um, when they told me, I was just, I sat in that hospital room and I just cried. And um, I just didn't understand why I was having to face it all again. And um, I spent a week in the hospital there in Pennsylvania. They tried to make me comfortable as they could. They did a procedure. It, they didn't get it all. And so mom and dad got me home to see my doctors. and. My doctors confirmed that there were still blood clots in my leg, and so my doctor at home ended up in the hospital again for another week. And um, when I got home and recovering and all those things, I think that was probably the lowest point in my life. Um, I was just, I felt defeated. And um, I questioned God. I didn't know why I was having to deal with it all again. And um, many times I listened to music. Um, preaching and different things like that when I'm at my lowest and uh, this song would play and we had already recorded it um, but CC Winans I would listen to her version of the goodness of God and one night the Lord met with me in my room and he just told me I've still been good to you I'm, I'm still you're still here and there's so many things that I've been blessed with and um, this song is called The Goodness of God, and I hope it's a blessing to you.
There seems so many fires, so many tongues, and her testimony to blood clots. Lord Jesus, my daughter, has been through it. He's healed. He heals. Hold on. Yeah. He takes care of you. <coughs> he comes in when you least expect it, and he does. Amen. Katie had a situation for one of the clots, and she's like, Mom, I'm being helped out of this king's daughter. So I'm like, well, Lord, here we go again. Yeah. That's okay. Well, he took care of her. He yes. healed her. And he'll heal you too. Yes, he did. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the fires. I'm thankful because I can look back and say, Lord, you got me through that. You got me to get through what's to come tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I feel so good. I just can't stop sick in here. Yes. And just say that God is just, he's good. Yes, he is. He's yes. so wonderful. Yes, he and I is. love him so much. Yeah. And I know that whatever, well, I walk out that door the next two minutes, it's like, <coughs> he's with me. Amen. And I just thank him. And I love him. And I love the peace. And I love the, the comfort. And I love just knowing that I know that he's mine. And yeah. he loves me so much. Yes. And I'm thankful. I'm so thankful this morning. <coughs> Amen. Farther along, you want to know all about Amen. it. Amen. Yeah. Right. Farther along. We don't understand why. That's right. Cheer up, my brother. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to understand now, but you yeah. can't trust <laughs> God will always be. Yeah, God. praise his name. Yeah. Yeah. There will be a day. Amen. We'll understand why. Amen. 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 All right, kids, y'all. Go on for I preach. Billy's supposed to preach. <laughs> Flag me down at the end, but you don't want to do that. Amen. I'm going to pray for Brother Billy. Well, I'm glad he's good. Amen. Yes, right. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad this life does not depend on me or my faithfulness, but his and his alone. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you. I do pray for Brother Billy right now. Lord, if you would supernaturally equip him this morning, fill him, use him, open our hearts and our ears that we may hear. God, you've promised your word would not return void, and I pray this morning we claim that it would do exactly what you intend for it to do. Or would you meet with us in such a way in the next little while that we never forget the life-changing, eternally impactful moments that we spit together on this day. We love you and thank you, Jesus, and we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm chapter 96 this morning, please. Mm-hmm. Psalm chapter 96. And again, thank you so much, Pastor, for having our family in here with you all. It is an honor and a joy uh, to be able to just take a few moments to be able to celebrate missions another month. Amen? And uh, what a blessing that it is. And you know, missions is not something that we do. Missions ought to be who we are. And uh, and I can tell you that uh, as I have seen uh, Restoration Baptist Church grow in its missions accomplishment uh, in trying to win the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, after speaking with Brother Adam last night uh, in his office for probably a good hour and a half or so last night, and I wanted to stop in there and say hello to him. And boy, we talked and talked about missions and our responsibility to win the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what a blessing that it is to be able to be on mission with God. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I want you to just take a look this morning, if you would, please, over to Psalm chapter 96. Let's all stand in reverence to God's word as we take a few moments here this morning and find out what we have that God would have for us here today. Psalm chapter 96. Excuse me, begin reading in verse number one. The psalmist said, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. That being correctly read, that is Psalm chapter 96, verse 1 through 13 this morning. May the Lord add the blessing uh, to the reading of the word of God. I want to just preach on this thought this morning as you're continuing to celebrate missions this month. I want to preach on this thought this morning, missional certainties, missional certainties. Let's pray and ask the Holy Ghost to help us this morning. Father in heaven, we love you so much. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to be in the house of the Lord. God, we are thankful, God, for the songs that have been sung, Lord, that has brought us into the atmosphere of worship. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony, God, of your goodness and your grace by our dear sister this morning. Thankful, Father, that we have been able to come here once again. Lord, not to see a personality. God, not to be able to rejoice or boast in anything that we could have ever said or done. But Lord Jesus, we have come here to exalt you. Father, we have come here to be reminded of our opportunity, God, that you have given us to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, with a world that is hurting and struggling. Lord, I believe with all my heart that the gospel will mend all the broken hearts. Lord, I'm a firm believer that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, will mend the marriages and it'll save the drug addict. It'll take care of the alcoholic, Lord, and the prostitute. Lord, it'll do everything, God, that you uh, have bidden it to do. Because, because, God, there is power in your message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's power in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd help us to continue to proclaim that message. Then, Lord, if there's anything whatsoever that is between you and I, Father, I pray that you would forgive me, scrub me up, God, and help me, God, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless this great work, use them for your honor and for your glory. God, I pray that they would see the visions, God, that is given here in the Word of God about missions Taking the commission seriously, Lord, and helping us, dear God, to occupy until you come. So, Father, fill my mouth and my heart, dear God, with what you want me to say today. Nothing more, nothing less. Lord, we'll talk to you later. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so very, very much. I want you to know this morning that if you are a child of God, if you have been saved by the grace of God, then the most important assignment that you can be on in this life is to be on mission with God. Here in Psalm chapter 96, uh, they say that this psalm was actually inspired uh, by the great hymn that we sing at Christmas time called Joy to the World. But how many knows that joy to the world can be sung all year long, amen? Because real joy has been brought to our world through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a church without missions is a church that has absolutely no mission. In fact, did you know that there is one thing that you cannot do about missions? And simply, friend, that is that you cannot get rid of your responsibility if you have been saved by the grace of God to be on mission with God. As a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, your responsibility, again, is to be on mission with God as the Lord Jesus Christ has saved us and set us free. And that responsibility will follow me and it will follow you until we take our last breath here on planet Earth. And if you fail to support missions, whether it be by prayer, whether it be through financial means, whether it be as a local New Testament church, if you fail to support missions, then here is the vote that your church is casting. Your vote is being cast to bring missionaries home and to cease missionary work uh, around the globe. And the reason why that we should be on mission with God is because God is constantly and always on mission with us. And when you begin to think about this for a few moments, God 
has been on mission throughout history uh, to be able to accomplish his purpose uh, throughout the earth. When you think about seeing the Lord Jesus Christ in the Word of God and seeing God in the Bible and reading about Him, He is always trying to do at least three things to accomplish His purpose. Number one, He is always making sure that He is revealing Himself and glorifying His name every time you see Him in the Word of God. Number two, you also see Him establishing His kingdom. Number three, you are always seeing him reconciling himself to the world because of what he did at Calvary. And so the word of God continues and shows the revealing of his glory to man in order, here we go, that God's name should be glorified because it has always been his plan and it has always been his purpose for every nation of the world to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And throughout the Word of God, you can see how it is that God used individuals in order to be able to make sure that this purpose is continuously being revealed. For example, you have Abraham. And through Abraham, God revealed Himself as the Lord Almighty and the provider who wants to bless every nation of the world. Through Moses, God revealed himself as the great I am, whose desire is to manifest his glory to the world. How? Through his people. Through you and I that have been saved by the grace of God. Through David, God revealed that his seed would rule over every nation of the world, and his kingdom would be for all people and all generation. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, God revealed his love and his purpose to reconcile the world through himself, through the incarnation, through the crucifixion, through the resurrection, and through the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Apostle Paul, God revealed that salvation is provided to every individual that would believe and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And through the Apostle John, God revealed that people from every nation, from every tribe, from every tongue, if you will, that all people will be able to come someday around the throne room of God and worship Him as King of kings and Lord of lords. And through Restoration Baptist Church, what He is doing to all of us this morning is He is inviting us to declare the glory of His story and be on mission with the Lord Jesus Christ throughout all eternity. Amen. Amen. And so may I say to you, listen, what is God's mission? Then you may ask this question this morning. Then Brother Billy, if that's been God's purpose, what He has done, and been doing it through the uh, corridors of time, how do I get on mission with God? What three things should I concentrate on? Number one, we should concentrate on glorifying the name of God. Amen? Amen. Number two, we should concentrate on establishing His kingdom. Amen? Because that's what He did. And then number three, to reconcile the world to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our responsibility to win every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. My friend, not only right here in Charleston, West Virginia, but around the globe. This is where we start. But friend, there is a massive world out there with 8.1 billion people that need to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what I want to do this morning is I want to take a couple of minutes. And I want to go through this text this morning so that we can see... How it is that God uh, wants His name glorified, uh, His kingdom established, and to reconcile the world to Himself. If you got a pen and a piece of paper, jot this outline down. Number one, I want you to see that being on mission with God, number one, God commands us to be missional. God commands us to be missional. You will notice in the chapter 96 here in verse number 3, that God, instead of God carrying out this mission all by himself, you know what he has elected to do? He has elected to choose me and to choose you to involve us uh, in making sure that the gospel message goes around the world. I want you to understand that there is no plan B when it comes to God. Amen. Amen. He has asked me and he has asked you to go. And I can tell you, friend, that listen, either you and I are going to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
or the job is not going to get done. He has told us here in 96, Psalm 96 and verse 3, he tells us, look what he says. He says, first of all, to declare. He tells us to declare. In other words, he is telling us to reveal or to uncover. What are we declaring? What are we revealing? What are we uncovering? The text goes on to say, we are declaring his glory among the heathen. We are declaring and we are sharing the story of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that we are to share it with the heathens of the world. Well, when you take a look at that word heathen in that text, it is actually where we get our word nation or nations from. And so the last time that I checked, there are all kinds of heathens here in Charleston, West Virginia, up in Hammond, Indiana, where I live, and all over the globe, amen, needs to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you are here this morning and you are thankful that somebody came by and declared the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to you? Amen? Amen. Aren't you thankful that somebody took the commission uh, of declaring the gospel of Christ so that I can hear it, so that you can hear it? And here we are this morning being reminded once again that we have a responsibility to declare the glory of God. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, he also declared, didn't he? Right. He told us in 1 Corinthians 15 for us to declare this message or to reveal this message. He reminded the church at Corinth, <coughs> excuse me, the, he reminded the church at Corinth that it is the gospel that you have been saved by. Mm -hmm. It is the gospel upon which you stand on. Right. And he went on to say that that gospel is being defined as the death of and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, friend, this is the message that you and I are to declare. And he goes on to say, not only should we declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people, uh, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty is in his sanctuary. There is so much that is in that text. I want you to know that the ultimate value of our salvation, the ultimate, I want you to get this, the ultimate value of our salvation is not what we are saved from. <laughs> and I am thankful and I am grateful that I have been saved from the wrath of hell. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. I am thankful and grateful that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who is walking not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The value of our salvation is not only in what we are saved from, but what we are saved for. There is a purpose, friend, in why it is that we have been saved by the grace of God. I want you to know that God longs to be more than just globally famous. Amen. He's longing for so much more than to just be globally famous. He wants to be faithfully worshipped. Amen. Worshipped here. Worshipped around the world. And the only way that God is going to be worshipped is for God to be known by His people. Amen. That is the only way, friend, if you and I are to declare His glory among the nations of the world. That is what He has asked us to do. Are you doing it? Are you declaring the message? Are you telling others about the Lord Jesus Christ? I want you to understand, think about this, that whenever you see in past history, go by and study it. I'm telling you, it'll be a great study for you to take a few moments to think about. In past history, <coughs> excuse me, when you see people coming to Christ, when you see social injustices rectified, when you see economic, economic opportunities improving, people overcoming health issues, revival among the saints, repentance among the sinners, when you start seeing those things happen, you can trace it down and you're going to find a root cause and why all of those things are happening. And here's what you will find. You will find that believers are involved in four things when you start seeing this stuff happen. Number one, you are going to see pray, God's people praying for the will of God. Yeah. Number two, you are going to see declaring the word of God. It's going to be taking place. 
You're also going to see that people are worshiping the ways of God. And you're also going to see people supporting the works of God. Amen. And so if we want to see people coming to Christ, if we want to see the social injustices that are going on in our nation right now as we speak, if we want to see economic opportunities uh, start improving in our country, uh, people overcoming health issues and revival among the saints and people repenting of God and asking God to help them, I think it's important for every child of God to walk out of here with these four nuggets on your mind today. Amen. That we've got to pray for the will of God, declare the word of God, worship the ways of God, and support the works of God. Psalm chapter 22, verse number 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Since God inhabits the praise of his people, he's looking for the praise of his people. Do you realize that praising him should be our first line of defense? Did you know that? Our first line of defense. You see, most of us are familiar this morning with the idea as praise, that praise could be worship, right? We understand that. Praise is worship. We also understand the concept of praising as being a witness for the glory of God. But have we ever considered or thought about praise being a weapon? Have we ever thought about praise being a weapon? Now here's what James chapter 4 verse 7 says. The Bible says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Bible says that we are to submit ourselves. In other words, we are subjecting ourselves in complete obedience to God. How many of you, that when the devil is on your back, ever taken a few moments to completely subject yourself over to the ways of God and to the will of God and to the works of God. Friend, I can tell you that that's where praise comes in at. That when we subject ourselves over to God, the Bible says something's got to happen. Something has to take place. That when we submit ourselves to God, when we resist the devil, when we set ourselves in total opposition to everything that he throws our way, and how many can say amen to the fact that he sure does throw a lot of junk our way? Can I get an amen right there? And he throws his fiery darts constantly at us all the time. <coughs> the Bible, excuse me, the Bible says that when we resist the devil, the Bible says that he has to do something. He's got to flee. He's got to go. Amen. How many has learned that in their life? Amen. amen. Only two of you. Well, praise God. I hope the rest of you learn it. Amen. Because, friend, I can tell you that, listen, I don't know how many times in my life when Satan was throwing one fiery dart right after another, one attack right after another, uh, when Ashley was dealing with that sickness and that suffering, and, man, I watched my girl going through all of that, and I'd watch her open her Bible, and I'd watch her pray, and I'd watch her sing, and I'd watch her go through all of that, Friend, I learned one thing, that when discouragement and when trouble begins to come around our way, that when we, in the midst of our heartache, in the midst of our trials, that when we begin to worship and honor the Lord, thank God Satan's got to go and allow God to enter in, friend, to the issues and dealings that we are having in our lives. Amen. And so, friends, sometimes when it comes to telling others about Christ, Sometimes, friend, when uh, we sit back and think that we have to be a Bible theologian in order to be able to be a witness for the glory of God. Friend, God did not call us to be Bible theologians. He called us and made us responsible to understand the Word of God. He gives us a responsibility to study the Word of God, to show ourselves approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. I know what the Bible says. But friend, I am here to tell you that you don't have to be a Bible theologian to be a witness for the glory of God. Amen. You can't talk me out of what Jesus has done for me. 
and we can't talk you, shouldn't be able to talk you out of what Jesus has done for you. Amen. If you've been saved by the grace of God, friend, you ought to throw your hands up in the air and worship Him and praise Him and thank Him and let the world know, thank God, what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Friend, that's what He's called us to do. Psalm 68 says, Let God arise. Let His enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate Him flee yeah. before Him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked Amen. perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice Amen. before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to His name. Extol Him that rideth upon the heavens by His name, Yah. And rejoice Amen. before Him. A father of the Father and a judge of the widows is God in His holy habitation. Amen. Amen. I say we ought to praise Him. Amen. 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 Thank Him for what He's done. I want you to know that we need the spiritual weapon of praise. <coughs> Excuse me this morning. We need the spiritual weapon or the spiritual weapon of praise because Satan is constantly, here we go, he is the master deceiver. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. He is the author of idolatry. Yeah. He is the he undermines faith in God. What else does he do? He twists values and he promotes falsehood. He I... infiltrates our institutions. And friends, sometimes he can infiltrate the church of the living God. He perverts governments. He warps educational systems. He corrupts the church with compromise. He is Satan. His name is the devil. The Greek word for devil is the word diablos. That is where we get the word diabolic and diabolical from. How many can say amen? That is certainly yeah. his name. Amen. amen. He is not, he does not play fair. And friend, he will never play fair. Friend, I can tell you that if it was up to him, this church would have a for sale sign on it. This pastor and his family uh, would be split up. And friend, I can tell you that all of us would be going by the wayside if it was up to the devil. Amen. Because he does not yeah. play fair. Amen. But I'm telling you, yeah. God yeah. has given me a commission. God has given you a commission to let the world know that thank God Amen. Satan has been overcome Amen. by the blood of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. We are more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. Greater is He that is Amen. in you than He Amen. that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. So understand this. Understand this that the only hope for lost humanity is the life-changing message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the only way to get it, the only way to get it to the 40% of the world that still has not heard the gospel, billions of people that still have not heard the gospel, Frighten, I can tell you that the only way to do it is through evangelism and worldwide missions. There's a text that says, lengthen the cords and strengthen the stakes. You see, friend, if we are going to, if you know anything about tent making, you're going to know that the larger that a tent is and the longer that the cords are pulled in order to create the tent, the deeper that those stakes have to be driven into the ground. And so if we are going to ask the missionary to lengthen the cords, if we're going to ask them to run across this globe with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we're going to enlarge the tent in evangelism and missions, then how many would agree that there's got to be a strong home base? How many would agree that the stakes have to be driven deeper into the ground in order for that tent to continue to remain and stand. And friend, that's where I come in. And that's where you come in. You see, my family and I have been in missions and evangelism for 23 years. And there's places that I will go that maybe you'll never have the chance to. Or that you may go and I'll never have the chance. Friend, I want you to know that when there is a strong base. And when God's church is working to make sure to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God. 
Yes. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, there's just no telling what God can do with us as a local New Testament body of believers. You see, by declaring the glory of God, here's what we are doing. When we declare the glory of God, we are literally partnering with the Lord Jesus Christ in his mission. That's what we're doing. We're partnering with him. John 17, 26 says, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. You see, at the end of history, here's what's going to happen. Love is going to be the triumphant thing that is going to win. Amen? It's not going to be uh, a BLM. It's not going to be uh, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, it's not going to be Washington, D.C. Friend, it's not going to be any of that. Real love coming from the throne room of God and what Jesus did for me and for you is what is going to be triumphant. How do we know that? Revelation chapter number 7 and verse number 9. It says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. What an amazing scene that is going to be someday. Amen. There we're going to a land, thank God, where there's going to be no more white churches. Yes. No more black churches. Yes. No more Korean churches. No more Spanish churches. Thank God. Every nation, every tribe, every kindred, every people, every tongue, thank yes. God, is going to be yes. around the throne room of God someday. Can I get an amen right here? Yes. William Carey, the father of modern missions, who set sail for India from England in 1793. He expressed the ultimate triumph of God when he said these words. He said, when I left England, my hope of India's conversion was very strong. But amongst so many obstacles, it would die unless upheld by God. Well, I have God, and his word is true. Though the superstitions of the heathen were a thousand times stronger than they are, and the example of the Europeans a thousand times worse, though I were deserted by all and persecuted by all, Yet my faith fixed on the sure word of God would arise above all the obstructions and overcome every trial because God's cause will be triumphant. Fred, I can tell you that when you study William Carey's life, you will certainly learn that he won an awful lot of people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of Satan throwing his fiery darts. So God commands us to be missional. Second of all, here we go, God compels us to be missional. Did you know that? God compels us. In other words, there is this powerful, irresistible influence that God has placed upon me and that God has placed upon you. You see, the glory that God is talking about here in Psalm chapter 96, I want you to get this. It doesn't just speak of any glory. In fact, the psalmist is talking about specifically the glory of God being declared to the heathen. And so we hear this word all the time, don't we? Glory to God. Somebody will say, it. glory to God. Give glory to God. We're glorifying the name of the Lord. Has it ever occurred to you the word glory and what it actually means? What is it? He's telling me to declare, declare of the glory of God. Well, what is the glory of God. The word glorify here, the word glory refers, here we go, it refers to the essential worth, beauty, and value of something. So in the word of God, it speaks sometimes of people, the glory of people. In other words, the beauty of people, the worth of people, the value of people. But it also carries the idea of created things. We talk about glory and created things, showing worth and beauty and value and things. But we also hear and speak specifically of the glory of God, declaring the beauty, declaring the worth, declaring the value of God. That is what it is that he is wanting us to attribute him to and to declare to the world. Now, 
I want you to jot these down, and I'm almost done. Stay with me. Golden Corral is open all day. Can I get an amen right here? All right? So get this real quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. His glory flows in three directions. How does his worth, his beauty, and his value that he wants us to declare, how does it flow? Number one, get this. His glory flows in creation. His glory flows in the creation. Psalm 19 and verse 1 says this. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So the heavens, the Bible says, declare the glory of God. When I walk outside in this beautiful state called West Virginia, and I begin to see these beautiful hillsides and mountainsides, and I begin to see the trees, and I begin to see the sun, and I begin to see the value of creation, how many would agree that there is great beauty in creation, great value in creation, essential worth that is found in creation? Well, the Bible says that we are to give glory in Creation. Now, why would we do that? According to Romans chapter number one, the Bible says that mankind is going to stand before God and they're going to stand there without an excuse. Why will they do that? Because creation tells them of the existence of God. Amen. Uh, they cannot listen. I know that people say they are an atheist. But I am a firm believer that there is no such thing as a real atheist. Because creation tells this individual, they can say they are, they may be an agnostic, but they're not an atheist. Because friend, I can tell you they may not believe in God, but creation still speaks to the heart of an individual and tells them that there is a created being. There is something that is out there that has created the heavens and the earth. And so, friend, the Bible says it is our responsibility as children of God to declare the glory of creation to the world. Amen. Amen. We are to show that there is great value. There is great beauty that is found in great worth that is found in creation. Why? Because God has done mankind a favor. And he's done us a favor by placing creation down inside of our hearts. Amen. And so it is our responsibility to tell the world. Psalm chapter 96 and verse 3. What did he say? He said, declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. The first time that I was in Arizona and I saw the Grand Canyon, I'm telling you, when I first placed my eyes on it, I couldn't help it. I started tearing up. I choked up when I saw all of that beauty. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, there's a curse on this old earth. Could you imagine if the curse was lifted? Could you imagine if the curse was gone? Friend, what this place would actually be and look like if the curse of creation was gone? But here I am looking at this beautiful uh, painting, if you would, that God portrayed. And I couldn't help but start singing, oh Lord my God, when thou an awesome wonder. Consider all the works that thy hands have made. Verse 4 here, he said, <clears throat> Excuse me, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. Here it is. But the Lord made the heavens. The Lord made the heavens. And friend, we are to declare the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ through creation. We are to not only glory in creation, but we are to glory in Christ as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, look what it says. For God, who commanded the light to be shined out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are to show the world that there is great value in Christ. That there is great beauty in Christ. That there is real worth in the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, I can tell you that, listen, uh, your finances are going to fade away. 
our health is going to fade away. All of these things are going to take place. But there is real worth and real value and real beauty in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are getting ready to celebrate that next Sunday, amen, that He went to an old rugged cross and He died, thank God, for the sins of me and for the sins of you and for the sins of the entire world, amen. And we are to show the world that there is such great value in what Christ has did for me and you at the cross of Calvary, amen. So we glory in Christ. We also glory in the church of the living God. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World without end. Amen. How many would say that when I look across and you look across this building this morning, that there's great value and great beauty and great worth that is setting inside of this building. Because you see, friend, if, if we could, if we had time, and I started asking each one of you to give testimony of what Jesus Christ has done for you at Calvary. Oh, friend, you'd be able to stand up here this morning and talk about how God put your marriages back together. How God saved you out of a gutter somewhere. How the Lord restored you. How you thought money and riches was what it was going to be that was going to make, get you to heaven. But here you are sitting in the church of the living God. And it is an opportunity for us to show the world that we are normal people that have been saved by the grace of God. That we are nothing more than sinners saved by the grace of God. Amen. Why in the world, my friends, should we be concerned about the worship of God? Psalm 96 and verse 6 says, Honor and majesty are before him. Here it is. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Friend, as I look over this congregation, I've been around here a little bit over the last 10 years, and I know some of your stories. And I am, and I am very well aware of what God has done for many of you that are sitting here this morning. Friend, it is a value. It is of value to let the world know of the testimony of what Christ has done for me and what Christ has done for you. One man of God said, honor and majesty did not refer to God's self-experience. Rather, along with strength and beauty, they are fe features of God's presence that are to be the experience of people who approach Him in true worship. There can be nothing more splendid or majestic for humans than to be elevated in place in the gorgeous, heart-stopping grandeur of God's regal presence. Amen. Friend, may I say to you, that's what I want more than anything in this world, is to glory God in creation, in Christ, and in His church. In closing, God concentrates us to be missional. God brings us and draws us to a common center, if you will, starting to direct our focus towards Him and Him alone. Beginning in verse number 10, the psalmist starts moving to this climax, doesn't he? What does he say in verse number 10? He says these words. He says, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall uh, establish that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. In verse number 10, you will notice the declaration that God's people should tell the world that he is the king of kings and that he is the Lord of lords and that he is going to be the one that reigns over all of the earth. In verse number 10, the world, the Bible says that the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. In other words, he shall judge the people righteously, speaking of the future government where the righteousness of God is going to be the thing that covers the land. It's not going to be Moscow. It's not going to be Washington, D.C. It's not going to be Beijing. Friend, it is going to be the glory of God that is going to declare the land of righteousness and rid the land, thank God, of everything that is wrong in this world. Thank God he is coming back someday. 
And I'm thankful that we are going to a land where there's going to be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more suffering. Thank God He will be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I see verse number 10. Number 1, there is absolute sovereignty when it comes to God. The Bible says, say it, say it. Say it. Say among the heathen. Say among the nations of the world that the Lord reigneth. The idea here is to make a universal proclamation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there are still billions of people that are outside of the walls of this church here today that has not heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he tells us, say it. Say it, say it among the nations of the world that the Lord reigneth absolute sovereignty, absolute security. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Right. Friend, thank God there's going to be no more wars. There's going to be no more rebellions. There's going to be no more uprisings. It will be a reign of absolute righteousness. Nothing is going to be able to remove it. It is on a firm foundation. It does not need crutches in order to be able to prop it up. Friend, because he is our security this morning. Amen. Not only do I see that, but I also see absolute sanctity in verse number 10 as well. He shall judge the people righteously, the Bible says. This ought to be the opportunity for all of us to get the white hanky out, wave it around this morning, and say praise God and glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, friend, I can tell you that, listen, it is our blessed hope of every believer that he is going to judge us righteously. What the, the wrong, the right, all of it, God is looking it will be right. It will be perfect. And the Bible says in every nation in the world has the opportunity to be able to rejoice because we as a church are declaring this message of the glory of God. Amen. You see, I don't know where to start. Maybe you're saying that you don't, don't quite know where to start being on mission with God. One man of God said this. He said, if you can't preach like Peter, if you can't pray like Paul, just tell the love of Jesus and say that he has died for all. Missional certainties. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you. Lord, we thank you this morning. Father, forgive us for not being on mission with you. Father, forgive us, Lord, for not taking a serious look in glorifying your name, letting the world know that there's great beauty and value, God, in who you are. Lord, I'm a firm believer it's going to be the thing that will fix it all. Father, I know sometimes that we drop our money in an offering plate, and we feel like our responsibility in missions is done and over. We'll give the money. We'll allow our missionaries to do the work. But Lord, I remember reading in your word where it said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Lord, when I see that word ye in that text, I understand, God, you're talking to me specifically. It's a personal pronoun, God, and I see, God, that you're talking to me. And so, Father, while I want to see my brothers and my sisters in Christ grab a hold of this commission, grab a hold of this responsibility, Father, I'm asking you to let it start with me. Help me. Lord, I want to have the desire in my heart I want to have the desire in my heart and Lord act like I'm the only one that has the opportunity to do this. I guess, Lord, I want my brothers and sisters to grab it. I, Lord, I want them to get it. I want us all to be collectively working for the kingdom of God. 
But Father, I'm just asking you to place this burden in my life and continue to let it grow. Father, that I can take as many people to heaven as I possibly can. Lord, there's some people here today, Lord, no doubt. They've got family members that are lost. Lord, they've got friends and co-workers that are lost. Students that are in school, they're lost. Neighbors that are lost. Father, I pray that God, you'd help them to realize they're a missionary. They're, they are a missionary to reach mom and dad. They're a missionary going, trying to win their neighbor. They're a missionary going to declare the glory of God to the heathen, to the people that live in every nation of the world. Father, please let that burn in our hearts. Father, I pray the Lord you'd help us in these days. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, heads bowed and eyes closed. We're going to sing a song of invitation. Brother Adam's going to come. But I just wonder here this morning, if maybe you might just raise your hand and say, Brother Billy, I've got some family that's lost. Would you pray for them? Could you raise your hand right now? Raise them up real high. Raise them up real, real high. You've got family members that are lost. There's hands not going up in this building right now. It's amazing to me that people would not think about this for a moment. Do you have family that is lost? Raise your hand real high then so we can pray. How about neighbors? Yeah, that's right. How about others that are around you on a daily basis that doesn't know the Lord? We all have people in our lives that does not know the Lord. You can take your hands down. When's the last time you prayed for them? When's the last time you told them? When's the last time that you were the missionary that took that message to your neighbor just next door? Friend, I wonder, I wonder this morning if there'd be a church this morning that would decide to come around these altars and just pray and ask God to help us. If there's apathy in our life, Lord, please, Help us to get rid of it. Lord, if there's a nonchalant about who we are and what we are in our job, God, please help us. It seems like oftentimes when we get our salvation settled, we don't worry quite as much about the person next to us. But that's not what God called us to do. God called us to tell them. So I wonder this morning, maybe you're here this morning and you've got a need. Maybe you're here this morning and you're struggling this morning. You've got Mount Everest out in front of you right now. And maybe you're just going to say, Brother Billy, pray for this need. God knows what it is. Would you raise your hand and let me pray for you as well? Somebody, there you go. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. Somebody else is in need of my life. Thank you for being honest. Maybe you're here and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. There's never been a time in your life when you bowed your knee to the Lord and asked God to save you. Friend, if that's you this morning, could you just maybe raise your hand and say, nobody's going to bother you, I promise. Brother Billy, pray for me. I'm just not sure. I just don't know if heaven is going to be my home or not. Would you pray for me, Brother Billy? Somebody like that here this morning. Anybody at all. Father in heaven, we love you. Lord, and I pray, dear God, for these folks that have raised their hand who have lost loved ones. God, I pray for those individuals, God, that are here this morning that, Lord, have a real need in their life. Maybe there's somebody here, Lord, that couldn't raise their hand, but they don't know you. Father, I pray that you be with them as well. Father, help us to be soul winners. Help us to take this commission seriously. Lord, we love you. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.